Our next storyteller is Claire, but let me pull one more, one more now so we know who's gonna come after Claire. Next will be Garth, Garth Gilchrist after Claire. So please, everyone, let's welcome Claire Castell, a story from history. Hi, everybody. Um, a lot of you have heard this story. It's one of my favorites, and I like to tell it at Christmas. Um, it's called 1914 on the Western Front. And in 1914, the world was into World War I about five months. Everybody had thought the war would be over by Christmas. But Pope Benedict, seeing that it wasn't, suggested a temporary moratorium for a celebration of Christmas on all sides. But generals on both sides, they absolutely refused the ceasefire. And the Western Front, you probably have heard, was a line of battlefields from Belgium through France down to Switzerland. And it was the one of the most bloodiest places in the war. At the Battle of Ypres, the Belgians lost 20,000. The French lost 30,000 and the Germans lost 130,000. At the battles in Somme, over 100 million lives were lost on both sides. But nonetheless, more than one unofficial truce took place on Christmas Eve day. And remember, the the Western Front, the Germans are 300 yards away from the Allies, and the, the no man's land in between was muddy and covered with frost. We had the Allies, were the English and the French, the Scottish, Belgians, and the sounds of guns and firing and exploding slowly died on. Christmas Eve day, and there was quiet. Now, there was a British private, Marmaduke Walkington, I kid you not, that's the real name, reported. We heard sounds. We heard a song. The Germans were singing Christmas carols. Well, pretty soon one of the Scots got the bagpipe going and he's playing along. And then all of the British start singing along Christmas and Silent Night. And this went on for over an hour. And at the end of the evening, a German pops his head up and he says in his best English, tomorrow, you no shoot, we no shoot. And in the morning, they didn't shoot and we didn't shoot, Washington said. So at dawn, the Germans emerged from the trenches. And the Allies were naturally uh, suspicious. Is this a trick? And they kind of poked their heads up. And, and then they saw the Germans coming out and they didn't have any guns. They were unarmed. And they came out into no man's land. And then the allies came out. And they shook hands. And they exchanged gifts of cigarettes and rations. It's an amazing sight. Another um, a soldier reported um, the story. I don't know where it came from. It didn't come from our side, he says. The ball just came from their side and they made up goals. And then one fellow kicked the goal and then it was just a big kickabout. And there must have been 200 men playing football. That's soccer in American. And at the end of the day, men went back to their trenches and the next day the war continued. And there were stories of this truce 
happening in a number of places. And, you know, some think it's a myth, uh, but I believe it was true. There was, it was never repeated that generals would have none of that. But, you know, to me, it serves as a proof that even beneath this brutality of war, a little bit of the Christmas spirit and holiday goodwill prevailed over the horrors of war. Thank you so much, Claire. Some stories, we need them to be true. Yep. There's the facts and there's the truth. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much.